Our God is love. Hallelujah. Lord, we rejoice you this morning. We give you all the glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody raise your voice and adore him. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Come on, somebody raise your voice. Raise your voice and worship the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we adore you. We adore you, we adore you. Father, we lift you. Yes, Holy Spirit, we lift you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit.
Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Our lives are open, Lord. Our lives are open this morning, oh God. Ah. Father, every eye will see you. My Lord, every heart will receive you. Ah. Our Lord, everything will receive you, Lord. Ah. Creation will receive you, oh God. Redeva kosa talaba kosete. Mante kereva kosi katalaba kosata. Lord, our hearts are ready to receive you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, creation awaits, oh God. Oh, creation awaits, oh God. For our manifestation, oh God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, our hearts are open to you. My Lord, our hearts are open to you. Come and make a prayer this morning. Come and make a prayer this morning. There is no better person than you. You are the one he has chosen today. You are the one he has chosen to raise a voice. You are the one he has chosen to raise a voice this morning. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And there was a sound in heaven. There was a sound in heaven. There was a meeting in heaven. And they were asking, Who will go for us? Who will go for us? And then he had that voice. Uh, he said, I will go. Marada Bako, she said, I will go. He was torn for you. 
His life was given for you. He carried your shame and mine. Jesus, how we adore you. My hallelujah belongs.
spread the message of love to the nations because you deserve it oh God you've loved us unconditionally oh God you've loved us unreservedly oh God you've loved us with an everlasting love oh God you've loved us unconditionally come on if he has loved you just lift up a thanksgiving to him in other, in other tongues just lift it up just lift it up tell him thank you for the father that you brought me thank you for loving me even when I didn't deserve it thank you for loving me Lord thank you for loving me Lord thank you for lifting me Lord thank you for for changing my story Lord thank you for changing my destiny Lord thank you for the open storehouses Lord thank you for the greater glory Lord thank you Jesus come on if you're excited to be here just love on him tell him I love you Jesus I love you Jesus I love you Jesus you are the reason I'm here Oh, Jesus, we bless your name. One more time, just give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, whenever we come into the house of love, it's a meeting of lovers. Praise the Lord. What do I mean? You're meeting your lover, he's meeting you. You are dining together and fellowshipping together. Praise the Lord. And for those of us who have been in love, you know when you're with your lover, you fix your gaze on him, your attention on him. It's about him. You forget about every other thing. Praise the Lord. You forget about every other thing. It's about your lover. Now from that point of view, the meeting of your lover in this house of love, 
I want you to just love on your lover. I just want you to fix your attention on him by lifting up that praise to him alone. Praise the Lord. So you're going to do that right now for me. Lift up that sweet praise and sweet essence to your lover, to your king. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's out there. When you are with your lover, you don't care about your next breath. Why? He's there. You don't care about life. Why? He's there because he's got you covered. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One more time, just celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Holy Ghost. I'm excited for today. Are you excited? Come on, join me, celebrate the gift of the Lord to this generation, the Apostle of Love, Pastor Danstan Kagwisa. You all can do better than that. Celebrate the man of God, the covering upon this ministry, your coach, my coach, your mentor, my mentor, your father, my father. We love you, Daddy. Thank you for mentoring us and covering us. Now join me celebrate the woman of God, Mommy Winfred Takusa. She's right here. Come on, you can do better. Celebrate. Our mother. We love you, Mommy. Thank you for loving us. Our pastors are in the house. Uh-uh. Our pastors are in the house. We love you, Pastor T. We love you, Pastor Rona. And thank you for loving us back. Praise the Lord. Celebrate the choir with me. Thank you for the good job. You look beautiful. And before you take your seats, look to your neighbor on your right, on your left, and compliment them. Tell them they look beautiful. They look nice. They smell good. Tell them you're glad to see them. You may take your seat. And you may take your seats thereafter. It's a house of love, so you can love on them and tell them, welcome, love. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you excited for tonight, today morning? Are you excited? Come on, can I hear some voices of excited and expectant people for this service today? Are you excited? I want to welcome you. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you on behalf of God, who is the head of this, over this ministry and the vessel appointed and anointed for this assignment, Pastor Dike. I'd love to welcome you to this Sandy Love service. You are in the right place. This is World Restoration Center Church, the house of love. We experience love. We get to have intimacy with our lover. Praise the Lord. And every time we hear the transformative word of love, we get into our rest, our, our places of rest, because we keep encountering, we, we, we keep enjoying the presence of love. Praise the Lord. So you are in the right place. Our online church, we love you. Come and join me, celebrate the online church. Thank you for joining us. Pastor DK loves you. God loves you. Praise the Lord. We're excited that you came here. You, you, you tuned in today morning with us and you will be blessed. Praise the Lord. One more time, celebrate the online church. We love you, online church. Allow me to take you through a few announcements this morning. Our weekly program stays as usual. Every Monday we have the revival prayer meeting starting at 6 p.m. at our old cathedral. And every Wednesday, praise the Lord, tell your neighbor, every Wednesday. Mm -mm, you can do better. Tell your neighbor, every Wednesday. We have the Agape meeting starting at 6 p.m. at House of Rest. Along Kampala Road. Praise the Lord. How many of you have been blessed by the past Agape meetings? Now, that number, please bring along someone every Wednesday. You've been blessed. You need someone else blessed. Please invite someone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Are you bringing someone this Wednesday? Ah, those are a few voices. Are you bringing someone this Wednesday? That's much beautiful. And every Thursday we have our online midweek love fest. At Sorry. Praise the Lord. <laughs> this coming Wednesday is a special Wednesday. We are receiving the second quarter blessing. How many of you were present in the first quarter blessing? How many of you stayed standing the entire service? Mm, no one stayed. Now this coming Wednesday, please bring everyone that you can bring. Praise the Lord. Pay for their transport if you have to pay for their transport. Hallelujah. For we are coming for the second quarter blessing. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm excited and expectant for Wednesday. It's a special one. And every Thursday, we have our online midweek love fest starting at 7 p.m. It's an online service. You can just get to our YouTube channel under the name Pastor Dansan Kagusa, and you will be tuned in. And every Sunday, we have one service starting at 9 a.m. Feel free to invite your friends, family, and loved ones. And for this Wednesday, please, 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 it's a special one. Bring someone. Amen? Bring people. Not just one person. Bring people for this blessing because it's kept us moving. Amen? We have testimonies through the first quarter blessing, and I'm sure there will be great and mighty things in the second quarter blessing. Hallelujah. It's the thing that is pushing us through this year. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now we have giving lines for those who would love to give through mobile money. Uh, we have an Airtel line which is 0752-552-565. And the MTN line which is 0781-421-652. For those online, it's on your screen. And we also have a bank account with Centenary Bank. Those who want to give through the bank. Uh, the account name is World Restoration Center Church. And the account number is 31000630072. Give and you will be blessed and you will make your money count in this time and generation. Praise the Lord. Uh, for those who want to brag about the goodness of the Lord, you can send your testimonies through text messages, WhatsApp or via email. Now, that for those who need who are Airtel users, the Airtel line is 0751-323-319-0. No, the Airtel line is 0751-323-319. And the MTN line is 0770-494-410. And you can also send your email, you can send us an email through testimonies at agape meetings. Dot org. Praise the Lord. Your testimony will bless someone. And today, we have an amazing testimony. <laughs> Celebrate Jesus for that. But first, let me finish this. Uh, for those who registered for water baptism, there is baptism this Saturday, the 1st of July, 2023. It's starting at 10 a.m. But you are advised to be at the Old Cathedral at 9.30 a.m. AM. That's if you've registered. But if you haven't yet registered, you can still register. It's not too late. You can still register with Minister Trishila or Minister Namutebi. Peace. Praise the Lord. And we continue to collect alms for the Ruby Rizzi Crusade. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can bring in your alms, bring in items like clothes, shoes, soap, it's better to bring them early such that they are sorted and give and, and, and we send the precious gifts to the precious people of Ribirizi. Hallelujah. For more information, you can contact Deacon Mark and the Lord will bless you. And we have ministers of the word at the back of uh, this auditorium every after service. Our man of God has, has given unto us ministers who will pray for us, encourage us, and in case you want to meet them, you can get in touch with an usher. They will direct you exactly where you to be. And God will bless you. Hallelujah. 
And right now, allow me invite Miss Allen with a testimony. Come on, you can clap as she comes. Keep, keep clapping. When your time comes, we'll clap for you until you arrive here. Praise God, church. My name is Allen Tukilize. I am a member of this church. I joined in 2015. Now I have a testimony. But I will take you back a little bit so that I can bring out my testimony very well. I suffered a hip dislocation in 2014. And... Uh, when I went to the doctors, they told me I needed a total hip replacement surgery, which was done. So I did the surgery, and after the surgery, I faced some complications. My thigh was paining. When I went back to my surgeon doctor, he told me it is a condition that always happens to the hip patients. So I'll bear with it. It will go with time. But the pain was too much. I was a new member of this church. To pastor, I told him, I said, my thigh is paining, my hip is paining. I don't know what to do. He prayed for me, and the pain went up to now. It has never come back. I was not sleeping on the on the operated side because you would sleep, and somehow you found yourself sleeping on the side with a lot of pain. He also prayed prayed for me, and I sleep very well on the operated side. Now this is the testimony. Of recent, I had gone home to Mbarara. I had a lot of pain. It was extremely too much. My sister was scared. He told me maybe it is time for renewal because they told me this, this surgery is renewed. It is renewed. The, the artificial hip that they put is due for, it can be due for renewal, but they did not tell me the exact time. Now my sister was scared. He said, maybe it is time for renewal. I said, no, I will not go for renewal. You know how the devil does. It would keep bringing that message in your mind, clicking, clicking. I said, I will not go. I came back here. I went for Agape services. I sat in the Agape. We sang, we prayed. I told God, you know it all. There is no healer like you. There is no doctor like you. I said, you are healing me. The pain was too much. I could not sleep. I would bring too many pillows, put in my bed. I kneel, and then I rest my head on the pillows. So when I came to the church, to Agape meetings, Pastor prayed. I took the word. I went home. I come a little bit far in Gayaza, very far there. So I went home. I always reach at around 11. So I slept. Now in the morning, I had not re even realized that I was healed. I was doing some house chores, and then I bent. I said, what? I was totally, totally healed. Yeah. I was not feeling any pain at all. And even up to now, I am not feeling any disorders. I am OK. Wow. My last testimony. Wow. I lost my job in 2020, 2021, and I left the job when I had a running loan in the bank. The loan became a pain in my... Uh, it was too much. It was running. The interest is running. You apply for extension. They don't extend. They extend for like two months. They keep on... Uh, running the loan. I'm not working, and it was a salary loan. What can I do? The money kept on accumulating. I had a plot in Gayaza there. I sold it, but it did not cover up the whole amount. It covered some bit of it. It remained 14 million. Now it again accumulated to 18 million. I said, what can I do? I am becoming a slave of this, of this loan. I approached a certain lady. I told her, I have a loan. I am not working. I do not have the money. But it is accumulating every day. Can you 
Can you help me? She told me I don't have the money, but I will look into it. Now, like two weeks later, she sends me a WhatsApp message. She told me, talk to the bank of officials. We shall go there and we clear the loan. Then the next Monday, we were supposed to go to the bank, but she had some other assignments. We couldn't go. We went on the, on the very Monday where we, when we were supposed to go. I, I received a message on my, on my phone that my account was credited with 18 million. 18 million. 18 million credited on my account, bringing my loan to zero balance. And I removed my security. I really give God all the praise because Hallelujah. he is God. He never fails. Then my last test st testimony. I, I, I am a mother. I became a mother when I was a little bit young. I, and I am a mother. My, my boy is in senior two. And my second one is in P5. So for some reasons, things could not work out. And actually, what accelerated the, the relationship was because of my health. Um, my father got me out of there. By that time, my father was still alive. He got me because I was dying there. Then, after going through the surgery, we couldn't go back. So I stayed with my children. From that time, the dad does not know whether they are living or dying. He never cared, no school fees, nothing. But this term, they were, they, they were living with my brother in Mbarara. My brother is a medical doctor. He works in Mbarara. So they spent the holiday there. So my brother called him and told him, you have kids, you have children. What is your plan for them? And he works, he has money, he's, 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 he's professionally a lawyer and he's in practice, he's working. He told him, I will, I will look into it. So a week towards the children going to school, he paid all school fees, he paid everything. I did not struggle looking for school fees when I'm not working. I did not go for more debts. Because, you know, when you're not, you're not working, you accumulate almost debts every day. So I really give God the glory and the honor. And I really thank Pastor Deacon. I've always told you that you became my dad after the death of my father. I thank you, Mama, for having a great man of God. I really thank this ministry. Because it has worked a great deal in my life. From the time I got this surgery, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. It affected me so much. I didn't like myself. I didn't. I didn't. I started living a quiet life. I would stay in my home, in my house, in my bedroom. My, my bedroom was the best place to be. Be in my bedroom and what, what next? I will not play football with my boys. What next? I was, it was like, it was the end of the world. But I want to thank this ministry. I, I really love myself right now. I, I feel loved. My family would tell me we still love you, but I would not believe them. I would think they are joking. Maybe they don't, maybe, maybe, something, will, maybe something will happen and all will run away from me. But I feel loved, really. And I'm so grateful. This, this word has done me a great, great work in me. And I am looking forward. I know God in this other quarter. God will do a great deal in my life. Right now, my CEO has called me. My former boss called me. He told me there is a system that he's, he's working on. The company that I used to work in is basically a system-based company. We, we don't have this paperwork and whatever. We work on system. So he told me there is a system he's doing. After finishing it, he will call me because I was stopped for nothing. 
And before that, I came to Pastor Lona. My family was, was, I'm sorry, my family was really not okay with me because I was not getting through. I don't have a job. I have responsibilities. I am here and there. They were not understanding me. They told me, you know what? You leave that church where you're going. I said, why? Because there is something that you need to break. There is something following you. You cannot, you cannot be in this situation all through. I said, there is nothing following me. They told me they had rented some car place there at Mutun where Pastor Tom for me to go there and go for deliverance every day, not to have transport. They had calculated and told me they would be giving me 30,000 every day for, for sleep, for sleeping and eating. I said, I'm not going anywhere. I came and told Pastor Lona. Pastor Lona, I told her, Pastor Lona, these people are taking me. And when I refuse, definitely, they will stop maybe the small help they are giving. I told Pastor Lona, what can I do? Pastor Lona told me, you will not go. You will not go and God will help you. You will not even go to the village, God will help you. I am so grateful that I've started seeing the mighty hand of God. He is doing great things in my life. I am grateful, I am grateful to God. I am grateful for pastor because he loves us. There is one time when he told me, I had a militant father who was too militant, very, very rough, very hard, but in his militancy, he loved us. Because when we lost our mom, he did not marry up to his death. That is the sacrifice I think he made for us. And I realized that he really loved us, but he was too militant. He would never show you that he really loved you as a child. But Pastor DK has really showed us that he loved us as a child. There is one time when I called him, I was having some job outside Uganda in East African countries. I also left without being paid. I was only paid two months. I told him I'm going. He told me, you go. He told me, I love you. I, I, I did not even answer because it was a shock to me. I, I failed to answer him. I don't think I even answered him. But thank you for loving us. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you, Pastor Lona. Thank you. Thank you. Come and celebrate Jesus. You can do better. Celebrate Jesus for those testimonies. Only when you meet the one who loves you and experience and encounter the word of love do those testimonies happen. Praise the Lord. One more time, just celebrate. Give glory to Jesus. Give glory to God. And for that reason, be inspired. Next week, Wednesday, just drag them. Eh? Drag them to the second quarter blessing. And their lives will not remain the same again. Come on, celebrate our man of God for loving us and telling us he loves us anytime. We need to hear it. Hallelujah. Allow me welcome Pastor T for the last announcement. And then thereafter, the choir will come back. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's give it up for Becky. Thank you very much. And let's celebrate our Father. And our Mother. Love you, Mommy. Pastor Rona, I love you. Celebrate Pastor Rona. <laughs> and celebrate yourself. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I uh, thank God for this opportunity. I'm here just uh, briefly to talk about a discipleship class. I want to bless the Lord for what God is doing in our lives. And uh, this year we've been having classes. And uh, we have a new class that is supposed to start on Sunday. In fact, today we met for orientation. And I want to encourage every one of you who registered. First of all, those of you who registered, make sure you come on Sunday and be part of the class. And then there are those of you who are, we've been hearing the announcements and you don't know what it's all about. 
<coughs> this class is uh, for, first of all, those of you who have just been born again and need to be grounded in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the best, a good platform for you to be taught. The Bible says, Jesus said that if you continue in my word, you'll be my disciples indeed. So there's being a disciple, and there's being a disciple indeed. This will help you to continue to get closer, to get fellowship with the message of Agape, and you'll be a real disciple of the Agape message. Number two, for those of you who are in transition, uh, you're moving from one church to this ministry, this will be a good platform for you also to know more about our ministry because you know that at least out of my experience when I joined this church the message was a bit different really very different and you need a place to help you settle in into the ministry so we encourage you to come and join us also we shall help you the Lord will help you through the message through the ministry and then for those of you this will be the third category. Who would want to join ministry with us? You want to be part of any department. We encourage all department leaders to, everyone who is coming up for ministry, to first go through the discipleship class so that you'll be able to communicate properly, especially those of you who are coming for pulpit ministry. You find yourself communicating something which is different from what we are teaching in this ministry. So... A discipleship class will help you to know the depth of the ministry, the knowledge, and then the language of the ministry. It will prepare you for your ministry. So come and be part of it. There are some of you already in ministry ranks and you've not yet come. Please come. We shall have a good time. I want to thank God that uh, uh, among us, the students we had in the last class, which just ended before we went to Rubilizi, Many of them went to Rubidizi, and their performance was very good, very good. So if you want to join ministry, come, and the Lord will bless you. We have wonderful instructors, men and women full of the word and of the spirit of God who help you to grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I encourage you to register with us. In fact, the class is beginning next Sunday. So register with Trishila, Minister Trishila, please wait, stand up so that they can see you. Yes, that smart lady, we thought she was the service host today. <laughs> and then uh, Minister Namutebi, where is Namutebi? Peace, please stand up where you are. Maybe she's not yet here yet. Oh, she's on duty outside. She's on YouTube. On duty, okay. Okay. Make sure you find Trishila and Register and Namutebi. Ask for anyone, any Asha they will lead you to her. And then finally is to remind you about our, our they talked about it, baptism. We have baptism every, every, every after two months. So this, we we're supposed to have it last Saturday, yesterday, but we had an overnight, so we could not make it. So this Saturday, this coming Saturday, at 10 a.m. Those of you who missed baptism, I, I know some people have been in Christianity for long and you've not been baptized by water. Please come. Some of you may be saying, I was baptized when I was young. No. We are talking about immersion in water. That is the right way. We do it at World Restoration Center Church. So register with the same people, Trishila and uh, Namutebi, and you come. And be blessed together. Next Saturday, this, uh, is it this Saturday or next Saturday? Saturday. Praise the Lord. Come and we shall have a wonderful time in the presence of God. God bless you so much. I love you. See you in the discipleship class and on baptism ground next Saturday. God bless you. <laughs> Choir, it's your turn. Thank you.
Praise God, church. Praise God, mommy. <laughs> Praise God, daddy. We love you so much. Amen. We want to bless the Lord this morning. We want to thank Jesus for allowing himself to flow through us. Hallelujah. This morning, I want, I want to share with you a story. Praise God. One man was carried in the spirit. The spirit carried him and took him in the desert. Praise God. And in that desert, there were many bones. There were many bones, not just fresh bones, dry bones. Praise be to the name of the Lord. And you know when they bury people, I think their bodies are like this. And even their skeleton, it remains like this. Praise be to God. And those bones were scattered in that desert. This one's bone was the other side. This one was the other side. And the other one was the other side. So this man of God looks at the bones. And he's like, what's going on? And the Lord asks him son of man can this can these bones live can they live can anything come out of this <laughs> the man said God you know praise be to the name of the Lord that was a moment where you can't tell I'm like how can you go to the cemetery and be like, and, and then God asks you, can anything come out of this? Your first answer will be, how? Praise be to the name of the Lord. The man of God told, told God and said, my Lord, you know, whatever had happened to the bones, no one knows. To the point of them getting scattered like that. No one knows what happened to those bones. Praise be to the name of the Lord. There was a silence in the desert. No voice. No nothing. The bones were hopeless and helpless. Praise be to the name of the Lord. And then God told him, speak. Speak. Praise be to the name of the Lord. I mean, how can you tell me to speak to something that is... It takes faith. To believe in the one that I've told you to speak. And this, this was not a voice of a man speaking to the bones. Praise be to the name of God. The Bible says he puts his word in our mouth. Maybe the, vo the, the, the bones look, reached a point where they could not hear any voice. When the voice was scarce and they died. Praise be to the name of the Lord. And when the man of God spoke to the bones, every bone to bone, they formed a body. Praise be to the name of God. They lived again. He told him, prophesy. Praise be to the name of the Lord. We are in a season where we are preparing for the souls in Ruby Riz. Praise be to the name of God. There are certain graves. People are living dead. Praise be to the name of God. 
People need the redemption power. People need restoration. Praise be to the name of God. And we are the voice that the Lord has ordained. We are the voice that is chosen in this generation. Praise be to the name of God. The God who does miracles. The God who does the impossible. He's the God we are carrying. It's a privilege. My love. My love, we are ready to go for you. My Lord, we are ready to go to every valley. Our feet are ready to travel with you. My Lord. My Lord, these hands are ready. They are ready to hold them.
on wall You cannot break through Mountain you can move All things are possible There's no broken But you can break through So you cannot say go back You're the God of revival Mansala. Come on and then you see it. God of revival pouring out, pouring out. Every strong one to crumble. I hear the chasing the crowd. God of revival pouring out, pouring out. Come on and then you see it. God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every strong of you crumble. I hear the chase in the ground. God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Shele lele gabara lele, shala gabara. Ramalada <laughs> The darkest night You can light it up You can light it up God Everybody put your hands together for Jesus. And this morning, Lord Jesus, you're welcome here. You're welcome here, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing in this land. Thank you for what you're doing in our country. Thank you for what you're doing in our nation. Thank you for what you're doing in our generation. Thank you for what you're doing in our time. Thank you for what you're doing in this ministry. And thank you for what you're doing through this ministry. We thank you, God. And we bless your name. Welcome here, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your wonderful, wonderful name. 
in Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen, 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 Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn to your neighbor, welcome them to the house of God. Tell them you're welcome. Tell them you love them. Did I tell you to see it? You're tired this early. Ask them how was your week. Stand on your feet and have a, a 30 second conversation with your neighbor. How was your week? Family fellowship. Family fellowship. is going to ask me how my week was. Anybody had a bad week? No. Wonderful. Then you can take your seat. Jesus is good. Can we welcome those that are online, online, online? Online family. YouTubers, you're welcome. Are we still doing online radio? Is, are they on? If there's anybody on online radio, they're always there, actually. Online radio, because we don't see you, sometimes we forget you, Bambi. We love you. We love you very much. And we, Shalom High School is with us. Yeah. With 500 students gathered, and I'm told they got now visitors from a neighboring school they also want <laughs> god of revival pour it out so something beautiful is happening in fort Porto. shalom high school neighboring schools are visiting very soon the hall will not be enough for them blessed be god for what he's doing can i have the lambs. Okay, before the children come, can everybody in this house of love and all of you that are online stop calling our children kids? Stop it. Stop it. We copy things that we have no clue where they came from. And if I sat down with anybody, I don't, remember, I don't care who it is. Even great men all over the world, great men of God, presidents all over, they call our children kids. Where does that come from? That's demonic language. Where does it come from? And just because the whole world uses it doesn't make it right. I think Pastor Titus said something very important here talking about the discipleship, the, you know, categories of people coming to discipleship and those of you that want to join ministry, that it's important, you know, every ministry has its... The message really should center around Jesus Christ, but and that's okay. Don't over... Every ministry has a message and the thrust of their message, and different ministries have different thrusts. But at least there are certain things we should agree about generally as the body of Jesus Christ. But I think he said something important, that one of the things discipleship class will help you to, to, to get your hands on is to understand this ministry, what we are about, our message. You could have come from a church where all you talk about is break this, break the other, mango this, cast whatever, and all those things. And there's a place for that, depending on which level of Christianity you're operating at. And then you... you it helps you understand which ministry am I part of and what is their language. What, he said something very important, and the language of the ministry. Does anybody remember that? Yes. He said you'll understand the message of them and the language. So there are certain things that are most surely believed among us at World Restoration Center Church. We don't call our children kids. 
I mean, must I take you back to P5 to teach you? In fact, P2, that kids are the young one of gods. Since when did Christians be gods? I mean, since when? Just because America came up with that doesn't mean we have to copy it. Calling our children kids, we prophesy the God spirit on them. And then we say, the children are not listening. The children are stubborn. The children are not... You're calling them gods every morning. And I don't care, you're going to be there, say, pastor, semantics. Semantics what? There is no word that has no meaning. You choose a word because words communicate. Listen to me, World Restoration Center Church. The reason we speak words is because we are communicating. If I stand here and I say, cockroach, come here, none of you will come. None of you will come. You'll all wait for a cockroach to come. Because the words I'm using are calling a cockroach. Cockroach, come, nobody will come. Dog, come, nobody will come. And here you are all over the world calling our children and you online. Calling our children kids. Just because America does it doesn't make it right. America is not heaven. No kids. Are they born of God? No. For the children to be kids, the parents have to be gods. So if you're a god, call your children kids. But I am not a god. I am God's sheep. When God called Peter, he said, feed my lambs. No, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Kids never refers to Christians. The Bible says at the end of the age, the Lord will separate the sheep from the goats. The sheep will be on his right hand. The goats on his left. Those are the sinners going into destruction. The young of goats are kids. The young of sheep are lambs. And here we are not paying attention. And saying, but this generation, this is a generation of children that are on drugs, that are perverted, that are what? This is a generation of children that is not listening to parents. This is a generation of children having premarital sex. You called them gods from when they were young and you thought it was okay. Well, Agape family is going to have another language. Amen. Stop calling our children kids. They are not kids. These are the little lambs of God. And if you are a parent and you call your children kids, if, if you're a goat, it's okay. You're a goat, you are wayward, leave my children alone. If they come to me here, they are lambs. Amen. But as long as the children come to World Restoration, they are World Restoration Center Church lambs. If mommy and daddy are goats, you be. That's your choice. Praise God Almighty. That is our language here. That's our language here. Hallelujah. Amen. You're the ones praying for blessing on children. You're the one counseling it. You're the one speaking wisdom. You're the one counseling it. You're the one speaking excellence. You're the one counseling it. You're the one calling them heads and not tails. You're the one counseling it. He said, my sheep hear my voice. He didn't say my gods. <laughs> Praise God. If you see the goat being taken to eat, it will fight you. It will dig in its feet. It will, it will fight, 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 fight. Not a sheep. In fact, I've never seen a rope around a sheep neck. They follow. But the goat... Even with a rope around it, it will try to shake it off. If the head is not working, the hooves will dig in. It will even sit. It will even sit. It doesn't want to be taken. And this is what you call your children. Stop it. Tell your neighbor, stop it. Praise God Almighty. Well, let me have my children come. Little lambs. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They'll say, oh, World Restoration Center Church, this has been around forever. We don't care how long it's been around. Sin has been around since Adam. So what should we do? Stick with it because it's been around for long? 
Wrong is wrong, and America may have given you that. And can I tell you something? You'll go to your dictionary and find the latest dictionaries when they put the word kid. They will also show you it refers to children. And then they'll give you meaning number two. One of those meanings will be your children, and the other meaning will be the young of a god. We got taught here. You go to the dictionary right now, even if it's online dictionary. They will show you the young of a god, then they will show you also refers to children. And you agree? Hallelujah. And you call my little Zoe, look at how beautiful she is. And you call her what? I'll punch your face. How are you, little lamb? <laughs> This one has my hair. Yes. <laughs> my wife is dying of laughter. What? Can't I have nice hair too? This hair came by impartation from me. <laughs> and if you don't see it on my head, it's in my spirit. Praise God. Look at them. So cute. These are my preachers of tomorrow. How dare you call them kids? Don't you ever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, parents, prophesy. Prophesy. What do you want these children to be? What are you making them? The prophet prophesied over dry bones. These are not dry bones. These are our children. Every parent, open your mouth and speak. This is where we create as parents. Huh? Some guys sang a song, Bomza de Katonda Wawa no Konsi. Okay, create. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, they are. Yes, Father, they are. Ratakala Gabaradaga. Retelelele Gabaradida. Rakalala Lala Gabaradida. Shantali Gabaradaga. Keep speaking, parents. Keep creating. Keep speaking. Keep prophesying. Marata liga baradiga. Retelelelele baranda lika parade. Rosele gubarida gamarandi. Shata kabarada gabarida gaya. Rekelelelele gabarade. Sede gila barata kalada gaya. Mante kele gabarade gaya. Selelele gabadi. Kolololulu gabaradada. Randa Baradiga Sele Budaga Bagia Rampa Rataliga Baradigia Oh Satan you have nothing in them nothing in our children you have zero Zut nothing in them they are filled with the spirit of the living God they are filled with the spirit of wisdom they are filled with the spirit of excellence they are surrounded by the favor of God they are filled with all the goodness of God. Grace and mercy follows them. The love of God is a canopy over our children. The word of God is prevailing in their lives. They are for signs and wonders in this generation. Our children are for signs and wonders. Our children are for greatness in the land. Our children are preachers of the gospel, ministers of the goodness of God. They are revivalists in their generation. In every area of their life where you plant them, Lord. We bless them from head to toe. We bless them inside out. Their spirit, souls, and bodies are blessed of you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless our children and they are blessed. Everybody say amen. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Children, can we give Jesus some money? You have money? Show me your money. If you don't have money, wave at me like this. Who doesn't have? We all have money. Anybody doesn't have money? Oh, parents, give me money. There's a little lamp here without money. If you where is your money? F is okay. There is one. Daddy, F, where are you? Mommy, H, F is money. Good boy. Anyone else doesn't have money? Okay. Where is the children's usher? Today you're the children's usher. You look like them. <laughs> Are you ever going to end? Another lamb of mine. <laughs> You'll never grow old, you know that? Okay, receive from the children. God bless you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, dear Lord. In fact, in this ministry, there is anti-aging. <laughs> A message is anti-aging. Banang. I'm looking at all my ministers, none of them is growing old. I look at my pastors, Pastor Rona is cutting years every year. Pastor Titus is overlooking how, you know, younger every day. And you online, I hope you prayed for your children. I hope you prayed for your children. And our children here are giving. So how do yours give when you're online? They're honoring the Lord. How, how do your children honor the Lord? You're online. You should put their offering online. All right? You're going to say media doesn't put that there. Media, we should begin to put it there for the children, for the children's giving. Some parent somewhere in US, UK, Dubai, somewhere would want to sow seed for their child and give for their child. Put it on for them. Let's see if some parents want to give for their children. Because a lot of times parents want to give for their children because they are doing something about their children's future. Amen. And children, I bless your finances Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will never lack, you will never beg, you will never be poor. Amen. You will always be givers in the house of the living God. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You are free to go. Clap for them as they go. Very special people. Hallelujah. You know, from last Sunday's service, my wife was supposed to preach today. But some of the crusade givers insisted and they gave very generously. But I have a deal with her. And she said she's going to give you a worship song. So, not today. Not today. Next Sunday. Next Sunday next Sunday. Father, we thank you this morning. You see, they are waiting for you. Father, we thank you this morning for your love, your grace, your mercy. Mercy and ending. Mercies that are new every morning. Lord God, we bless your name because you are a good God. And this morning we receive all that you have for us by your spirit. Everything you have for us by your spirit, we receive. 
we receive. We receive. Healing, we receive. Liberty, we receive. Blessing, we receive. Visitation on our finances, we receive. A fresh anointing, we receive. Favor, favor, favor in this city, we receive. Miracle signs and wonders in our lives, we receive. New open doors, we receive. A fresh touch of your spirit on our lives, we receive, Lord. And we thank you and we open up our hearts to hear from you, our bridegroom. We pray that you speak. Your woman is listening. Father, your children are listening. Holy Spirit, breathe deep down on the inside of us. We bless your name because you are good in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. This morning, you know, lately we've had choir, thank you. Take your sister. They look very lovely, don't they? God bless you. Beautiful ministry today. Beautiful ministry today. Hallelujah. With white shoes. That's nice. So what's the date today? 20 what? By, the, by that date next month, Ruby Rizzi will be finished. By 25th next month, Ruby Rizzi will be finished. We'll just be still reveling in what the Lord has done. Today is 25th. That leaves us with how many days to our crusade? Somebody give me specific math. Specific math. The crusade begins on 20... Actually, let's go to the traveling date, which is 19th. How many days are left before we travel? Because for us, crusades begins on, begins on 19th. So if today be 25th, and we travel on 19th, how many days are left? How many? Come on. Twenty-four days. That is three weeks and three days. Not much time. Not much time at all. And so, to all my crusade givers and sowers, God bless you. <laughs> That's all I can say. God bless you. Because you know what to do. You know what to do. And to all of you that are, whether online or here, and you've not yet joined the chariot, you've not yet pledged or purposed to give, I usually say that there are times you, when you're in doubt, ask God and say, what do you want me to give? How much do you want me to give? He will never be quiet on you. He will speak to you. He will speak to you and tell you, exactly how much to give. And the beauty about asking the Lord is that he will never ask you to give less. I discover that sometimes when it's us who decide what we should give, a lot of times we decide to give much less. Much less. Much less. But the Lord oftentimes tells you, come on, you're bigger than that. And I am bigger than that in your life. So, give more than that. Trust me for it. Never make a pledge for the gospel depending on your usual income. Ask the Lord, what do you want me to give? He'll point you to an amount sometimes that you didn't plan for, but an amount that you trust him for its provision, and he'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. Amen? So three weeks to crusade, all the generous givers, all the generous sowers, arise, arise, arise for the cause of the gospel in Rubirizi. Now, so I was saying that uh, the season we are in is pulling my spirit in certain different, oh, and I was supposed to talk to my media people because the most, I think the last two sermons on Sunday we had 
we are not exactly, is it the last two Sundays or the one Sunday? Some of the messages I've brought were not exactly in the more excellent way series and you're religiously sticking to that banner. But uh, you need to know when to change it if the someone is not in the series. Today, I want to talk to you about conversations with the blood of Jesus. Conversations. <laughs> with the blood of Jesus Christ. This is a beautiful season for us to be having conversations with the precious blood of the Lamb of God. Now, you dear ones that are online, ahead of time, because sometimes you leave us earlier than you should. And of course, all of you that are here, this Wednesday is special. Second quarter blessing as guided by the Spirit. You know, the Lord came out so strong and I saw that the Lord really wanted to bless your lives when he instructed us to do the first quarter blessing. Oh, how the Spirit of God moved into that place. So strong. So strong. And in fact, for those of you that want to get ready for the second quarter blessing, you might as well go back and watch the first quarter blessing, especially if you missed it. I mean, it would be good to make the connection. If you are not in the first quarter blessing, all you have to do is go on YouTube, our channel, Dunstan Kaguisa is the name of that channel. You type in first quarter blessing, first quarter blessing, bye, and you put my name. On YouTube, if you're just searching, it will go straight there. It will take you to that, and you listen to that message to the end. You will see how God is so intent on blessing your lives. And then that will fire you up and inspire you to look forward for more in the second quarter. So this Wednesday, bring everybody, if you have to bring your mother from the village, your uncle from wherever, whatever they've been going through, whatever, the message, there's nothing the Wednesday message will not deal with. Because the Lord has already given me the message. Amen. Bring the sick and put them in that auditorium. Amen. Bring those that think, Fini, put them in that auditorium. Bring those that think, Kwa, and put them in that auditorium. Br bring them, bring them, and put them there. When we have crowds like that, I don't lay hands. No, the Holy Ghost does it for me. Amen. For the glory of his name. But Wednesday, bring everybody. Bring your entire workmate, you bring your entire office, whatever, staff, put them there. And the Lord will meet his people and lay his hand of blessing upon them. Amen? Amen. Happening this Wednesday. Now, conversations with the blood of Jesus Christ. Why do I say conversations? I feel impelled and compelled by the Spirit of God, especially for the season. As we get ready for Obirizi, because our nation, our country, and every part of the world needs this conversation. Needs a voice. A voice that is beyond the voice of a man. A voice that is beyond the voice of a man. A voice that settles things once and for all. When we go to preach the gospel, it's not so much our shouting. When you're dealing with things in your life, it's not so much your shouting. Children of God, let me tell you something. You can pray all you want. You can fast all you want. You can scream all you want. You can, whatever, rant in tongues all you want. But the revelation of the ministry of the blood of Jesus Christ is so vitally important in our lives. There are things that just refuse to listen to people's voices. Until the person speaking to these things has another voice backing their voice. And we have to come to a place where we can have spiritual conversations with the things God has shown us 
to be very powerful in our lives. And one of the things, and the, actually the, the beginning of all things, the blood of Jesus Christ for us. Because the blood of Jesus Christ speaks. The blood of Jesus Christ has a voice. Amen. Somebody say, the blood has a voice. The blood, has a voice. the blood of Jesus has a voice. Jesus. Now, I remember one time somebody was telling a story of a young man who was trying to minister and cast out devils. And the devils were not listening to him. And he thought that maybe he's not loud enough. So he told Anasha nearby, give me a microphone. True story. Demons do not listen to the loudness of your voice. No. They don't listen to how loud you are or how eloquent you are. But there's a backing. There's power that backs up your voice even when your voice is a whisper. So that poor young man had no clue. They gave him the microphone. He scrammed himself to hoarseness and the demon was laughing at him. Let me share certain things very quickly with you. For you to understand why we're we are having conversations with the blood of Jesus and why it's so important for us to dig into that direction every now and again. In fact, when God allows us, I should bring full-blown series on the ministry of the blood. Amen. But in Genesis 4, we are looking at the first family that God put on the earth. Adam and Eve. Now, meanwhile, follow me because I'm pulling your life into a place of uh, certain manifestations. Certain manifestations. Somebody says certain manifestations. Manifestation. This message, if you pay attention to it, there will be certain manifestations that will follow. Amen. Because what I'm going to show you, it's impossible that a stronghold should resist it. It's impossible that a disease or a demon should resist it. It's impossible. So it follows that if you understand the message I'm going to share with you this morning, certain manifestations will follow. They must follow. And I'm not saying they'll follow in one day, but they must follow sometime very soon. Very soon. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And for me now, as I take you to Rizzi, this is very, very important. Because we need conversations with the blood of the Lamb of God. So the first family that was on the earth, Adam and his wife begot children. And the Bible says they begot two boys, Cain and Abel. And it came to pass that these two brought their offerings to the Lord. And Cain brought of the first fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. What happened here was Abel took care of animals and Cain was a garden tiller and he would get nakati and buga vegetables. So when it came for him to give an offering to the Lord, he gave, he brought nakati and buga and spinach to the Lord. So that guy but then his brother brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof and the Lord had respect unto Abel and unto his offering and I've always told you before that difference between Abel and Cain's offering was blood blood they both gave an offering so if you call it an offering it's offering on both sides but one had the voice of blood in it the other one did not Abel, how do I know? Because Abel brought of the fastlings of his flock and the fat thereof. Now, listen to me. If he had said he brought of the fastlings of his flock 
and left it there, you could think he brought them alive as an offering. It's Thanksgiving Day. So Simeon comes from Kabale with a cow. I said, Daddy, I brought a cow for you. It's in the parking lot. It's a fastling, right? But then the scripture goes ahead to tell you, he brought of the fastling of his flock and of the fat thereof. He did a sacrifice, right? And so there was blood. For him to be able to offer the fat, there was blood. And the Bible says, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but not unto Cain, because Cain brought of the first fruits of the ground. He brought greens, salad. But unto Cain and to his offering, the Lord had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, angry, and his countenance fell. And the Bible says, next verse, and the Lord said unto Cain, why are you angry? And why is thy countenance fallen? If you do well, shall you not be accepted? If you do well, what was he supposed to do well so that he's accepted? Listen, the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Without the sprinkling of blood, we cannot be accepted before the Father. We cannot enter into the Holy of Holies. For in the old, the high priest went into the presence of the Lord once a year. The Bible says in Hebrews, never without blood. Should that man go in there without the blood of an animal, he would not be accepted. Are you hearing me, beloved? If the high priest went in there without blood, he would not be accepted. In fact, he would not only be told him to go back, he would die. This is the seriousness of the ministry of the blood, which is why I say it. If you follow the message I'm giving you, there is bound to be manifestation following. So, never without blood could he enter in. Because blood is what made him accepted and the whole nation accepted. Blood is what gave him a hearing before God. And blood is what gave the people a hearing before God. And so now, God speaks to the first family. He says, if you do well, it's doing well. What has Cain missed to do well? He has missed to bring what? Blood. To come by blood. To bring blood blood if you do well and then he says shall you not be accepted so it's an issue of acceptance it's an issue of being what accepted being favored so what is it that makes you and i acceptable before the father the blood of jesus christ what is it that qualifies you to come before the father the blood of jesus christ listen it's not because you did well in terms of your performance yesterday that you accepted it's not because you've not smoked a cigarette or drank beer or done whatever that you accepted. You are accepted because of the blood of Jesus. So he says, if you do well, shall you not be accepted? And if you do not well, if you do not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall his desire and you shall rule over him. Now, it is so interesting when you study there. The first meaning people have walked away with, as far as this verse is concerned, is that if you do not well, sin, HIV, is at the door waiting for you. So you're about to fall into sin. Okay? That's the first surface meaning when you read the rendering of the, of the verse, the way it is, especially in the King James. And unto you shall his desire be, and then he says, you shall rule over him. But, when you study in other versions of the Bibles, he says, if you do not well, you're not doing well. That word sin lies, sin, it's actually supposed to be sin offering, a sin offering. A sin offering, so that would be a blood sacrifice. Lies at the door. God was actually telling Cain, you've not done well, but you can still do well. There is an offering not far from you, a sin offering. You can take it and he says, and that explains what follows. And you shall, and, and unto thee shall be his desire, is his desire. In other words, he's saying, you know, the sin offering is always for your deliverance, for your healing, for your blessing. Jesus came desiring you and me. And the sin offering desires to deliver you and to set you free. I, 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 I invite you to go study more into that verse in your free time. 
because I'm not going to take you to the different versions of the Bible. I didn't plan to do that. But a sin offering lies at the door. And unto you shall his desire be. He wants to help you. In other words, you can still take an animal, Cain. You can still take an animal. And then he says, and you shall rule over him. In other words, this sin offering wants to bring you out of that good thing you're feeling. That thing you're feeling. And, and, and I can see Cain, you are jealous against your brother right now. And you're thinking of doing something evil. And you're not supposed to. There's a sin offering. Why does God call it a sin offering? Because he can see sin is being conceived in Cain's heart. Jealousy. I always tell my children, if you ever sense a demon of jealousy coming into your heart, get rid of it. Just, just quickly get rid of it. Because the first murder that is ever recorded in scriptures and the first murder in the history of the earth was because of jealousy. Ask your neighbor, are you jealous? Onina kobuja, chimungambe murugando, luzungwa enzo kwa tapate, kalobodi na gulina kobuja, nebu atabanzi. Are you jealous? Are you jealous against anybody? Even if it's not me. Jealous against somebody at work, somebody in the family, a sibling, a brother, a sister. There are so many things that trigger jealousy in our lives. And sometimes we are not paying attention that we are actually jealous. We, we pretend like we are not. And yet it's eating away at us. Why do you feel bad when somebody is moving with a pastor and you are not? Why do you feel bad when somebody is sitting next to mommy and you are not? Why do you feel bad when somebody is holding the microphone and you're not? Why do you feel bad when somebody spends an hour in the pastor's office and you, you spent 10 minutes? Why do you feel bad? All these are demons of jealousy that how come he goes in and is there one hour? Pastor, do you love some people more than you love others? Don't ask me. Ask your heavenly father. Maybe for you, you are too okay. You come in and one minute with me is okay. Another one comes in for two hours. And you say, eh. Nga papa gives some more people more time. Ask your neighbor, what is that thing you're feeling in your heart? Chi, chi, chikulia. What is that eating at you? You will roll over it through the ministry of the blood. But never ever let. I, I pause there to say, Jealousy is so bad that the first murder ever recorded in human history was because of jealousy. The first bloodshed recorded in human history, the first death recorded in human history was because of jealousy. That makes it very dangerous and makes it a place for you to watch. Watch it. Praise God. So God sees that this thing is conceiving in, in Cain's heart. And he says, Cain, there's a sin offering. If you can still look to the blood, and have conversations with the blood, you can escape. A sin offering lies at the door. Unto you is his desire. He wants to help you, to cover you, and you shall rule over him. In other words, you can master him. You can take it and give it. But Cain didn't listen. Next verse. So Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him, killed him, killed him. And he didn't just strangle him. I'm going to show you that he didn't just strangle him. He shed his blood. He shed his blood. Because the next verse tells us, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? I always look at that verse and I say, How close God was with humanity. And how near he always is. Even to the sinner. I say you can tell from the way Cain answered God that they were used to having conversations with God. You don't answer God like that unless you usually have conversations with him. Who of you today, if God showed up in your room and said, you could answer him, ah, ah. No, you can't. It is time for all your prayer requests to be met. Yeah. You'll bow, you'll say, Father... Today thou arrest here in thy nest holiness. How I've longed with all my heart to see thee. Thou art mine and I am thine, Father. 
You could never talk to God like that. But when God, God walked with men in those days, and they got so familiar, the scene of familiarity, that Cain could answer God, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? I! Who are you asking? God. That tells you they were used to talking to God. They were used to talking to God. Praise God. Am I my brother's keeper? And God didn't slap the guy. Who are you talking to like that? Pie! You see, the love of God is hidden in scripture from the beginning. And people don't see it. People see anger all the time. And look at, who, if you can't even talk to your boss like that, you can't talk to your boss like that. You can't talk to your mother or father like that unless you're demon possessed. You can't, this guy talked to God like that. I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Gentle love listening to the belligerence of a young man. The next verse says, and God didn't slap him. If I was God, Almighty, slap you, put you to sleep for three days. When you wake up, I tell you, never ever talk to me again like that. Am I your equal? Do you know who I am? But God even ignored his belligerence and he says, what have you done? The voice of thy brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. Cain, what have you done? I hear a voice. I hear a voice. God is hearing a voice. And he says, the voice of your brother's blood crying unto me from the ground. Now, beloved, I want you to understand that in all creation, this was the first shedding of blood. You never paid attention to these things. Abel's death was the first death in the entire human history. Now you talk about the massacres and those that have died of Smaya COVID and those that have been killed in Kasese. God bless those families and help them, comfort them. And all those that have been, the first human death was Abel, number one. Number two, the first human bloodshed was Abel. Abel, the first death and the first bloodshed. So then it's important for us to come back here and look at what happened when this young man died. And you can now tell that when God says blood, his brother slew him by shedding his blood. Maybe he cut him with his knife or stone or something. I don't know. But he shed his blood. Or he banged him with a stone and just hit him and his blood just ran. So he says, that voice, everybody say the voice, the voice. of what? Thy brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. So God says, I hear a voice, and it's the voice of blood. Your brother is dead, but his voice is, his blood is speaking. I am having conversations with his blood. His blood is having conversations with me. That's what I want you to catch. He's dead, but his blood is talking to me. I can hear the voice of his blood. His blood is talking to me. Talking to me. But this is what I want you to note also. God is saying, I cannot ignore his blood. I cannot ignore the voice of his blood. He's talking to me and I can't ignore it. Neither can I silence it. In other words, I'm forced to have a conversation. I'm taking you somewhere, follow me. I'm forced to have a conversation with the blood of Abel. And that's why now I'm talking to you. Because I hear another voice talking to me. It's the blood of your slain brother. Now come here, Cain. We need to settle this thing. There are three voices. The voice of your brother's blood, my voice, and now your voice. And we have to settle this. There's a problem. Cries out to me from the ground. And he went ahead and cast him because he had no answer. No answer and he had told him, a sin offering lies at the door. He says, now you are cast from the earth, which has opened her mouth. Now, church, hello, Agape family. Hello. Look here. Listen to your father. This is the first time, Pastor Rona, God ever pronounced a curse on a human being. Because even with Adam, he didn't curse Adam. He never spoke. Many of you didn't know that God never spoke a curse on Adam. 
on Adam in Genesis 3, he says, cast is the ground for your sake. He never cast the man. The man would suffer because of the curse on the earth, on the ground. Put it on the board for them. Cast is the ground for your sake. That's what he said. Come on, projector, come on. Sheila, you better do my work. Fire Solomon. I don't have all day. Do you see it? Because you hearken unto you the voice of thy wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it. Cast is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Cast is the ground. The struggling of humanity was because the ground was cast. So if you went to do farming, the ground was cast. If you went to do anything, as long as it's on the earth, it would, you would struggle with it. And unless you went to planet Mars or whatever, but it's all the creation of God. But cast is the ground for your sake. So Adam, you'll struggle. But God never said, Adam, I've cast you. The curse was indirect. But with Cain, it's the very first time he puts it direct. Now, why does he not... Why, what is the difference? It shows you how much attention God pays to blood. Ah, slap your neighbor. How much attention God pays to what? To blood. The first sin, yes, it brought death, but they did not shed blood. They ate a fruit forbidden. Nevertheless, God had said, the day you eat of it, you shall die. So God had to see that through. But when it comes to Cain and Abel, he says to him straight, you are cursed. It's the first time God pronounces a curse on somebody. Why? Because blood. Now, follow me because I'm taking you somewhere. I'm going to take you to a place where you, you realize. Mm -mm -mm. Just keep listening. You are cursed from the earth which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from your hand. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? And then we're going to discover that verse there. You, <laughs> don't preempt my sermon. You can look at that verse in the reverse. It's like a beautiful girl in the reverse. Because the earth opened her mouth to swallow Abel's blood. And for the very first time, God pronounces a curse on a man because he has shed blood. When you reverse that verse, yes. and you look on the blood that has brought us into the kingdom of God, the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross and came also into the ground. Ha. Turn that verse around. Now, thou art blessed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive the blood of Jesus Christ from Ah Shatala Baridegaya. This is where everything changes. I wanted to give you that to wake some of you up because some of you are dozing. Now you are blessed from the ground. How does this happen? I want to weave it. Listen. The first time God pronounces a curse, he also knows there will be a day when I'm going to reverse that very verse for the same reason, except this time it will be the blood of another man. Oh, hallelujah. The earth has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. From thy hand. Later on, thousands and thousands of years later, the same earth would open her mouth and receive the blood of our brother, our firstborn. Uh, 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 uh. We have a firstborn slain by us, except this one. For this one, he says, this time we're going to work differently. You're going to be blessed by the earth and from the earth that has opened its mouth to take the blood of your firstborn brother. And the blood of Jesus Christ begins to change what? Everything. These are conversations with the blood. The first conversation was ugly. 
The last conversation is beautiful. <laughs> the first conversation is unto death. The last conversation is unto life. The first conversation is unto curse. The last conversation is unto blessing. Are you hearing me? So the moment that blood entered the earth, the voice began to come up. Cain, you killed me for nothing. Cain, you... Uh, uh, cast, cast, uh, cast. And, and God says, you are cast, Cain. How do we come out of that? Let's go to now Hebrews 12. Oh, my God. Hey, there's a voice speaking over you right now. Amen. Help me, God. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Let's go to verse 23. What was that time you read your Bible? I feel like reading that whole chapter from verse. So beautiful. So beautiful. Can we do some Bible reading? Yes. Are you okay with it? Yes. Let's begin from verse 1. We are foreseeing we have. We are also come past about with such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus. Oh, that beautiful name. <laughs> the author and finish of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. You've not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And you've forgotten that exhortation which speaks unto us, in, unto you as children, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. That means the disciplining, the instruction, the teaching. Nor faint when you are rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastens. He trains, he instructs, he teaches, he corrects, and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, instruction, teaching, correction, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father corrects not? Ask your neighbor for me, do you love correction? And get an answer from them. When pastor admonishes you, or when a someone comes and it's correcting you, do you put your mouth in your nose? <laughs> Boyfriend, God loves all people. Me, I'm like that. Leave us alone. Ask anybody, do you receive instruction? Nicely, with a good attitude. Ask for an answer. Answer me. How do you take correction? How do you take instruction? With what attitude? You know, some people say, do you know what some people say when they want to shut you up? Don't judge me. Everybody who tried to correct, don't judge me. God knows my heart. Brother, we are trying to help you. It's not judge. Did I say you're going to hell? I didn't say you're going to hell. I didn't say you're rich. That would be judgment. I am just telling you what you're doing is not right. Don't judge me. But if you be without just anywhere of all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons? Are you a bastard day or are you a son? Remember your primary school teachers that used to abuse you? Bastard day. Now it's now that I know they also didn't know English. Because the guy would shout at you, Basta day, and he would say, Basta day. Because you failed the math number. <laughs> Meanwhile, they were not children of God, and they didn't know they were bastards themselves. Basta day. Anyone of you ever been abused by that word? Muti doku wa nikakalenze. The schools we attended those days were nang. And then you go to the schools today where they are not allowed to spank the children. In those schools, the guy spanked you. The stick got finished, he got a second one. It got finished, he got a third one. And then when he's done, he kicks you and says, Basta day. That's how he closes the deal. 
We saw days. <laughs> but it says, if you be without chest and wear over all our partakers, then are you bastards and not sons? Somebody says, I'm not a bastard. You are taught of the Lord. Furthermore, we've had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Thank you, Jesus. Now, no chastening for a present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, this is Bible reading for somebody. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth a peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Whereof lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up and trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Bitterness. Ask your neighbor, are you bitter at anybody? Remember, we are fasting. Bitter. Ask your neighbor, are you bitter or sweet? Are you bitter herbs or your sweet, sweet? Ask anybody what's in your belly. Is it bitterness? Chigaji? Or is it honey? Sweet, sweet. What is in there? Tell your neighbor, bitterness defiles you and we are fasting. We are fasting. Lest any root of bitterness spring up and trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Next verse. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one muzzle of meat sold his birthright. You are not like Esau. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. For you are not come. Aha, uh -huh, now so. We've come into the zone that... For you've not come unto the mount that might not be touched, that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. You're not like Moses in the Old Testament. And the sound of the trumpet and the voice of words, which voice when they heard, they entreated that the word should not be spoken unto them anymore. There's a voice they didn't want to hear. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and tremble. I, I still wonder at the people that insist that they are under the Old Testament still. Even the man of God was afraid of God in those days. Verse 22. But you have come. Na, 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 da, da. But you, <coughs> tell him, but, but you've come. Mm, 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 mm. This is the news of the new covenant. Good news of agape. But you are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Hallelujah. I always wonder. People that are always studying demons. You want to get an African stool and ask them, kola mutia? We've come to an innumerable company of angels. Somebody say, angels, angels. are all around us. Oh. <laughs> there are more angels around you than demons. Amen. He says, whether you believe it or not, he says you have come to an innumerable company of angels. That means you have more angels around you than demons. Amen. But if you put your attention on demons, they are the ones that will be active in your life. If you buy a notebook to write about demons, they are the ones you'll activate because you activate that which you pay attention to. Do you understand? You activate, if a young man stands here, there are so many beautiful single girls here. If a young man stands here and just focuses his gaze on one girl, she's going to be gone. <laughs> and, and he's just looking at her like this. And she's, in other words, all the others are going to be okay, but this one he's looking at. She's gonna be, she's gonna be, in other words, she's gonna be activated. That's what I'm saying. 
She's going to be what? Activated. Activated. The others don't care, but this one. Activated. Why? Because she's given this attention. Is why you're looking at me like that. He's not saying anything. But attention. Attention activates. No, you haven't you read it? And we beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are being changed. We are being activated into the same image by the Spirit of God because we are looking at that image of God. We are activated into that image. So the thing you pay attention to is what is activated in you and for you. Now, he says, you've come to an innumerable company of angels. Somebody say, innumerable angels are all around me. And one way you activate them is to pay attention more to the spiritual world that is holy than the unholy one. You cannot waste your, your notebook writing demons. Namuzinda, Mukwabuzi, Namulanda, Bichebidala, Kaula, so you, uh, whatever. Don't activate. Tell your neighbor, don't activate that. You have an innumerable company of angels. Angels are at work for you. Praise God Almighty. Amen. You've come, so he tells us what we've come to, but you've come to Mount Zion, number one. You've come unto the city of the living God, number two. You've come to the, the, that heavenly Jerusalem, that's the city. And to an innumerable company of angels, number three, activated for you. Amen. And to the general assembly of the firstborn, Amen. that's the church of Jesus Christ, which are written in heaven. And you've come to God, the judge of all. And you've come to the spirits of righteous men made perfect. Slap your neighbor, Kayom Gambe. I'm a righteous woman. I'm a righteous man. I am made perfect. You are blessed to be sitting next to me. Tell me, but you're so blessed to be sitting next to me. You've come to my fellowship. The Bible says we've come to the spirits of righteous men made perfect. I am righteous and I am made perfect. And you are blessed to be sitting right next to me. That's what the Bible says. To the spirits of just men made this, look at our fellowship. This is our fellowship. So beautiful. Everything about our fellowship is what? Beautiful. Next verse. But you are, uh huh, and to, and you've come to Jesus, Savior, Lover, Redeemer, Friend, Husband. You've come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and you've come to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh I wanted to bring you there the blood of sprinkling that what speaketh better things than that of Abel hallelujah imagine it was thousands and thousands and thousands of years before a voice could come to answer Abel's blood. It's so painful. Yes, yes, yes. The whole world waited for a voice that could answer the voice of Abel's, Abel's blood. Yes, and there was no solution. And then finally Jesus came. I love him. Finally Jesus came. And Papa says, you have come to Jesus. Not to Cain, to Jesus. The mediate of the new covenant. You've come to the blood of sprinkling. His blood, which when God spoke concerning Abel's blood, he said it cries out for me, to me from the ground. And you are cursed because of it. Now he says, turn away from that. There's another voice here. There's a new conversation. We are talking conversations with the blood of Jesus. The conversations with the blood of Abel ended. Are you hearing me? Some of you come from places and families and you've been in churches where all they talked about was, you know, there's been bloodshed in your family. And I mean, that is something of concern. But quickly turn to the blood of Jesus and listen to another voice. Yes. 
My father was a witch, he killed people. My mother was a smile, what mattered people. Smile, my uncle was what, and he was the one paying my school fees, and he killed people. Those are conversations with the blood of Abel, conversations with the blood of the dead. They don't take you anywhere. You're trying to be sorry, but there's nothing you can do about it. God gave you an answer. You're trying to fix a problem you cannot fix. God gave you a simple fix. Going to the mountain to try to answer the blood will never work. And there was so much bloodshed in our family, so what? So what? You've come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks. It speaks for you. Better things than that of Abel. So I want to bring your attention to this blood. Can you listen to me for a moment? Where the blood of Abel spoke failure, spoke the curse, spoke poverty, spoke death, the blood of Jesus comes and speaks the total opposite. Where there was a curse, the blood of Jesus speaks blessing. Where there was disease, the blood speaks healing and health. Where there was failure, the blood speaks victory and success. Where there was shame, the blood of Jesus speaks glory and all these wonderful things. But this is what I want you to understand. So the Christian today, I want to draw your attention to, you know we pray. And a lot of times, there are two things that I've seen Christians put their faith in. One of them, Christians, many Christians have put their faith in their faith. So much so that when their faith struggles, they think it's the end of the road because their faith has struggled. And they have no clue, nobody has ever told them except they are hearing Pastor Dicke tell them that you didn't realize that you put your faith in your faith. But the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, agape, love, the author and the finisher of your faith. Meaning, God, meaning God never called you to pay attention to your faith. He called you to pay attention to him. He's the author and the finisher of it. In other words, it's one way, it's like saying you are hungry, but I've not told you to cook for yourself. If you're hungry, look to your wife, the author and finisher of good meals. You'll be fed. Amen. When I'm hungry in my house, I don't look at me. That's why my fingers are not burnt. Do you understand? I'm a blessed man. Hungry? Looking unto Winfred, the author and cooker of good meals. And I'm well fed. God never called us to pay attention to our faith. He says, looking unto Jesus. He didn't say looking unto your faith. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He authors it and he finishes it. Now a preacher tells you, you author it and you finish it. That's a conversation for another day. Because there is more there. Now, the other thing people put their faith in is their prayer. Mm, let me mess with you. Can I mess with you a little bit? Just a little bit. Mess, mess with you. Especially those of you that are too proud of how you pray, how much you pray, how long you pray, how bombastically you pray, how eloquently you pray. Some of us who stumble over our English, you make us feel like God is not listening. How can you not be eloquent in prayer? Throw in a kilogram of tongues, speak King James English, come on, pray long like Pastor Rona. And your faith now is in your prayer. Yeah. Let me tell you something, Muslims pray too. And Hindus pray too. The whole world is praying. Your faith must never be in your prayer. I discovered, I'm talking conversations with the blood. After you have prayed your best, you will never pray enough. After you have prayed your best, you will never pray enough. That's what God told me a long time ago. He asked me one time, Lily, do you know how much there is to pray for? Do you know each one of you right now as I'm looking at you is a prayer item? Yes. <laughs> yes. Each one of you. Yes, yes. 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 Pastor Rona, who she did intercession. Mama, Tandika. Tandika, Kunze. Odeku, Pastor Titus. Ebiange, Bukabi, Kutuwa, Lilimiake, Jueda. Otandika, Diku, Msajja, Waka, Tondono. Bieneti, Sobi, Mani. 
every one of you loaded with great divine destiny is a prayer item. I am supposed to live here at 85. She needs all my 85 to pray for her things. And I will not finish. Then Carol will miss. Then Lydian will never even receive anything. God told me your best prayer will never cover everything there is to pray for. Does that mean don't pray? Now I'm delivering somebody here because I'm, I'm, I'm inching you to some place where you should have some crazy manifestations that are effortless. He, he told me your best prayer cannot cover anything. That doesn't mean don't pray. Pray as he gives you utterance. When you're done, go to sleep. Kampala has so many problems. The world has so many problems. I mean, everything has so many problems. And everybody around you is a prayer item. But sometimes in prayer, he brings you to a place where he shows you a revelation. Like the one I'm seeing you now. That when you enter into a certain place, you can cover so much in the shortest prayer possible. Now, so he told me, your speech will never be sufficient. Sufficient to cover what you need to cover. So he told me, when you're done praying, your best, there's another voice that prays for you more eloquently, more accurately, more sufficiently, more, 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 what, what is the word? There's a word, more extensively, more comprehensively than your prayer. You know, in insurance, do we have anybody here who works in insurance? You have Smanya third party. It's totally cheap. It covers. Then you have smile life. Then there's what they call comprehensive insurance. Comprehensive insurance covers everything. Anything that can happen to that thing you have insured. Comprehensive. The reason it's called comprehensive is because it's what? Comprehensive. It covers everything. Now, your prayers are never comprehensive. But the Lord told me there is a voice. When you're done praying, that voice starts from there and covers everything you have not covered and straightens out everything you didn't say right and covers every detail you never thought about. Beloved, I learned a long time ago, my faith is not in my prayer. Do I pray? Yes. But my faith is in that love of God that covers covers first of all has given me the invitation to pray but covers more than i can ever speak now he says you've come to the blood of speak now you tell me pastor titus why does he say you've come to the blood of jesus that speaks better things than that of abel if you don't need the blood to speak for you why does he bother to invite you to the blood if he trusted your speech to be enough he would say you keep talking i'll answer you and he will answer you except you'll need 500 years to pray for your 90 year old life and you don't have 500 years to pray for your 90 year old life so he says you have 90 years on earth but you need 500 years to pray for it effectively that means you never will so he says i'm gonna give you another voice when you go into prayer every word you speak will be backed by this voice fine-tuned by this voice sorted by this voice backed by this voice given power eloquence sorting manifestation glory by the voice of the blood of jesus Jesus Christ. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. He says it speaks better things. 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 And as we finish this message in the next few minutes, you are going, I'm going to invite you to celebrate the blood speaking over different areas of your life. There's another mystery that I want to show you. Here's the mistake we make. We say, blood of Jesus, speak over my children. It sounds good, and you can pray it that way at a junior level. But he didn't say, ask the blood of Jesus to speak. He says, acknowledge that the blood of Jesus speaks. He says, he didn't say the blood of Jesus will speak. He says, the blood of Jesus speaketh day and night. 
ultimately yours is supposed to be a celebration father thank you this morning i was having holy communion i was saying father thank you the blood of jesus is speaking over me speaking over my wife speaking over my children speaking over my congregation i covered you as well speaking over i mean i covered the agape family speaking over our nation speaking over he says the blood speaketh so you enter into its speech Amen. you don't ask it to speak because it's already speaking do you understand what i'm saying you don't ask the blood to speak. The blood is already speaking. You enter into its speech. Have you found somebody talking? You found them talking and you enter into the speech. And you begin to join the speech. And you begin to celebrate the speech. Now, he says, speaks better things. Now, that, that means things. There are things pertaining to your life. That the blood is having conversations about he says my girl you'll never be a loser you'll never be a failure the blood of jesus christ has made you a success oh this is jesus christ causing you to triumph in every place making manifest the, the, the fragrance of the knowledge of him the blood of jesus speaks that you never die a barren womb the blood of jesus speaks that you'll not be a loser in life the blood of jesus speaks that you'll not die young the blood of jesus speaks that that cancer cannot stay the blood of jesus speaks that fibroids is dead the blood of jesus speaks that you have a job next month the blood of Jesus speaks that your business is exploding. The blood of Jesus speaks that your shop is growing. The blood of Jesus speaks that your career is progressing. The blood of Jesus speaks that your husband is behaving. The blood of Jesus speaks that your wife is respectful. The blood of Jesus speaks that your children are raised for God. The blood of Jesus speaks that your ministry is growing. The blood of Jesus speaks and speaks and you join into that speech and you begin to say and to agree with the blood speaking better things and you say father thank you that your blood speaks for me where I cannot speak speaks for me more than I can speak speaks for me better than I can speak speaks for me more eloquently than I can speak the blood of Jesus Christ speaks over my life and as we turn our eyes on the blood, it is activated. It's activated. Very, very activated. Those that ignore it, it goes as if it's silent. It's not activated. But those who turn their eyes on the blood, speaks, 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 speaks better things than that of able somebody say, Amen. Amen. Now, because we are used to hearing this verse, let me help somebody as I finish. Because this is a familiar verse. But I told you, if you pay attention, you can enter into a certain effortless manifestation. Better things. Better things. Now, he could have said the blood speaks salvation. And that's true. Of course, the first thing is speaks salvation. Better things. Better things. Your feet are healed. Your stomach is healed. Everything about you is healed. Better things. Things pertaining to life and godliness. Better things. But now, for somebody struggling to believe this, for somebody struggling to believe that actually there is blood, there is a voice beyond your prayer. There is a voice beyond your intercession. There is a voice beyond your fasting. I'm going to put a child of God to rest. There is a voice beyond your effort. It's a voice of the blood. Let me prove it to you. In a story you all know. God tells Moses, God tell Pharaoh, I want my children out. Meanwhile, we are talking 400 years of singleness. 400 years of poverty. 400 years of debt. 400 years of relatives driving wheelbarrows and bicycles and the richest does a boda boda. Not by choice, but mbera. 400 years of renting, 400 years of slavery. And God says to this man, go. I'm going to show you the power that's in the speech of the blood. Go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And so the man of God obeyed. And went to tell Pharaoh. If you want, call that prayer, call that commanding, call that faith, call that intercession, call that authority. If you know, there's a deep secret I'm going to show you. All those things. So Moses went before Pharaoh. 
He says, that says the God of the Hebrews, let my people go. Pharaoh sat back and laughed. If you don't let them go, I'll show you a sign. A sign? He threw down his stick, it became a snake. And Pharaoh laughed. He laughed. Because... <laughs> Moses, Moses, Moses. Is that the best you can do? He called his magicians by the hundred. They all threw down their sticks. Their sticks also became what? Except the man of God being a man of God should remain a man of God. His stick swallowed all the, the others. But already something is shown. And then he began the plagues. What was the first plague? plague? Water was made blood. What was the second plague? I can't even remember their order because I'm not a student of plagues. Does anybody know their order? The Nile turned to blood, all the fish died and there was a huge stench. And then there were, there were, there were, there were okay, let's try to remember them and at least just list them randomly. Water turned into blood. Frogs came, number two. Fleas, number three. Flies, number four. Darkness, that was the ninth one, number five. Uh, boils on their skins, number six. What else? Hail, hail that did whatever, number seven. Locusts, number eight. We covered darkness already. There's another one. Huh? That was the last one. There were nine plagues. We've covered eight so far. And, 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 and then the... I mean, there were ten. But we've covered eight of the nine before I go to the ten. Lice, whatever, all those things. In all these things, what I wanted you to see is this. Moses kept going to Pharaoh. Let my people go. So let's call that our repeated prayer. Now I have a question. Why do they keep in, why do they keep going back to the mountain? Even as you go down the mountain, the first there's a feeling in you. The reason you keep going back is because you went up yesterday. In your heart, in your spirit, there is a testimony that it's not quite done. So you come back the next day. This is Moses confronting Pharaoh. Pharaoh is a picture of Satan. This is you trying to deal with devils repeatedly. I break you. I mango you. I uproot you. My husband, he's only mine. My husband won't smoke a cigarette. Are you ladies him? Oh God, have mercy. Then you go home. Then the next time you come back, and devil, like I told you yesterday, mind me. Hey, that mind me. You are leaving. You didn't leave yesterday. Today you're leaving. By hook or crook, by fire or power, by energy and force, you are leaving. And then you're tired after five hours. And the next day. And God said, we pray without ceasing. Devil, I told you. That fool is now enjoying your attention. Devil, I told you, and you had me the first time. Don't behave as if you're deaf. I'm your living. You have to go. I see you are going. You are going. You are going. You are going. You are gone and never come back. Then you come back the following day. But I feel like you came back. I'm telling you now for the last time. For the last time. By now, Mlokola, Koye. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Mulokore Muchi, Mukou. Mulokore is tired. The child of God is tired because they are dealing with a devil that is a real pharaoh, stubborn as a mule. In every prayer you've prayed doesn't seem to be giving you. And God was in Moses trying to demonstrate something to us. Every visit and plague by Moses had power. But it was not the power that was needed. That's why when you're on the mountain, there's the way you feel power. There's the way you feel unction. 
You break into a holy sweat. This is what you feel. I'm pretty I'm after. I feel the anointing. Munkwate. I'm pretty I'm after. I'm after. I feel the anointing. Oh, hallelujah. Now you're going to find you on the chicharu. The thing is still there. There. And the Lord is showing us. Every time Moses went before Pharaoh. There was power, but it was not the ultimate power. I mean, there was power, but not the ultimate power. There was a voice, but not the ultimate voice. Are, are you hearing me? There was pressure, but not pressure enough to break the devil. God was building a case for the gospel. God was building a case for the cross. God was building a case for Jesus. God was building a case for the blood. All these plagues had power. But all of them, Pharaoh kept saying no. Even when that fool was scratching himself with boils. And couldn't kiss his wife. I was like, no. No. I mean, he was suffering, but he said no. The ninth plague was darkness. Three days, the Bible says, darkness so thick it could be felt. You could feel this darkness on your skin. It's a darkness you could not light a lamp for. Because if you could light a lamp and dispel it, anybody would light a lamp. But it is darkness so thick that even if you lit a lamp, the darkness came and covered the lamp like this. It's like you put a blanket on a lamp. That darkness was so thick. The Bible says for three days, no man moved from where they are. Now, for three days, you know, you have to do poo-poo, you have to do susu. Do you understand? For three days, because you literally, you are like a blind person. You can't, the eyes are open, but it's like you're blind. It is dark, so thick, it could be. So they sat there, they susu there, they poo-pooed there. The man is asking, mommy, where are you? I'm here. Come and find me. I can't find you. Which way are you? Darkness. And in that darkness, you'd think Pharaoh would come back to his senses. Even in the darkness, the guy said, no! And God said, Moses, I wanted you to know that after all your praying, that after all your fasting, after all your commanding, after all your screaming, after your headache on the mountain, there is a voice that will speak for you when you're quiet. There's a voice that will speak for you when you're tired. A voice that will speak when you're sleeping. A voice that will speak when you're not talking anymore. And Moses says, really God? Yes. He says, I trained you to pray. Not so that you can have faith in your prayer. I told you to pray. Not so that you can have faith in yourself. When you're done praying, my voice is the voice that speaks. So therefore Moses now, go back home and be quiet. And I'll give you instruction. Moses says, God, the children are still in bondage. And God said, that's your problem. When they are in bondage, they want to climb the mountain all that time. They don't know how to rest. They don't know how to enter. What did Jesus say? Come now, all of you that are heavy laden and tired. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. You'll find rest for your souls. It is when you find rest that deliverance and healing will come. It is when you find rest in the voice of the blood that deliver. So he said, Moses, you've done enough talking. Go home. But God, we are not. I said, go home. Get off the mountain. Go home. He said, he said, but God, he went. Now he told him, now, listen to me. Yes, sir. Tell every house to take a lamb. God, are we going to talk to lambs now? Pharaoh is the one with the people. He said, Moses, listen to me. I know what I'm doing. Take a lamb, not Pharaoh. I said, take a lamb. Yes, sir. Tell every house. Yes, sir. Tell them. This time, you are not talking. Kill the lamb. <laughs> Kill the lamb. Yes, sir. God, are we not supposed to kill Pharaoh? <laughs> because I'm used to killing Egyptians. Don't 
hata sitani mukama solo mtu ga without you god never sent you to strangle the devil he can strangle it without you moses was used to killing egyptians no you are not the one who is going to kill them go home kill a lamb take the blood tell them to put it on the door posts and on the lintels the door post and the lintel it's a sign of the cross they were doing this they were doing this put it there and then tell them he didn't tell moses and go back to pharaoh no kill the lamb shed the blood eat the meat and then he told them lock yourself in lock yourself in you've argued with the devil enough you've wrestled with the devil enough i want you to rest kill the lamb put the blood up and on that post lock yourself in moses tonight you will know that there is a voice that speaks better than you you will know there's a voice that speaks more persuasively than yours more convincingly than yours there's a voice that speaks with finality better than yours there's a voice that speaks to the stubbornest demons the stubbornest devils there's a voice and it's not your voice i want you to learn that moses he said yes i tell the children he told the children they all killed a the lamb they put it they put the blood there they locked the doors he says no more rebuking devils today not tonight it's in the middle of the night. Pharaoh is in his house. The Jews are in their houses. They are eating pork roast. They, no, not pork roast. Lamb chops. They are eating lamb chops. And then, meanwhile, he told them, put on your shoes. Because you're leaving tonight. Put on your shoes. Slap your neighbor. Put on your shoes. Put on your shoes, Pastor Titus, because you're going somewhere. Put on your shoes. Tell your neighbor, put on your shoes. Put on your crocs, even if they are crocs. Put them on. Put on Zinigina. Put on your shoes. You are going somewhere. Put on your shoes. It's not about your scribe. You're shouting on the mountain. Put on your shoes. There's a voice. Ah! Tell your neighbor, put on your shoes. There is a voice. A voice that is speaking for you. Put on your shoes. There's a voice opening for you. Put on your shoes. There's a voice that's going to rebuke that devil. Where you're going. Put on your shoes. There's a, a voice commanding your finances. Put on your shoes. There's a voice releasing your wives and children. Put on your shoes. There's a voice releasing silver and gold. Put on your shoes. And it's not your voice. Somebody say, it's not my voice. You have come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things. Better things. Somebody shout better things. What you read in Hebrews 12, 24, and it sounds theory to you, it was practiced in Egypt. God told the man of God, Moses, for once, tonight, preacher, I want you quiet. I want the blood to speak for you. I want you to know the blood speaks. They put the blood, they locked the door. No one engaged Pharaoh that night. No, no, no. There were no arguments with Pharaoh that night. No phone calls, no WhatsApps, no messages. Pharaoh let the people go. No. God was saying, Pharaoh, my man will not talk to you anymore. I didn't call him to have conversations with you. I called him to have conversations with me. Tonight there is a voice that will speak for him when he's in his house. There's a voice that will speak to you. You listen to that voice. There's a voice that will speak for them. I am tired of having my children argue with you. Devil, my children are not supposed to be in, their, in your face arguing with you as if they are devil worshippers. No! Somebody said they locked the doors. And the Lord said to Moses, my angel will go through the land. I told you, you have come to an innumerable company of angels. And the angels are activated by the blood. Somebody shout hallelujah! 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 The angels are activated by what? The blood of Jesus Christ. Activated by the blood. He said, Moses, put the blood. Go to rest. An angel be activated. 
And he said, my, my angel goes through the land. When he hears your intercession. Uh-uh. When he sees the blood. When he sees the blood. Uh, yeah. When he sees the blood. Hey, hey. When he sees the blood. Now, there's a conversation between the blood and the angels. The angel is killing a firstborn in every house. But when it comes to my house, the blood and the angel are together. The, uh, the blood and the angel understand each other and I'm in my house I'm silent I'm saying thank you Jesus oh hallelujah oh hallelujah I love you Lord <laughs> they were in their houses singing hymns and eating lamb chops oh glory to the Lord and the blood is talking oh glory to the Lord <laughs> Woo, hallelujah and the angel of the Lord went to every Egyptian house killing every firstborn this is not Moses at work this is the angel of God at work activated by the blood of the lamb are you hearing me and every time he came to the house of the Jews the blood just did this and he passed and he passed and he passed he came to the Egyptian houses he killed those ones Moses man of God Israel children of God did not pray a prayer that night they were not fasting that night they were singing hymns they are quiet they are rested are you hearing me conversations with the blood of Jesus that is what is happening in your life happening in your life somebody say happening in my life and while they're still wiping their mouths of the lamb meat they hear a banging on the door bang 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 who is it Pharaoh's soldiers Moses Take your people, take their women, take their husbands, take their children, take your flocks, take your money. Ay, ay, ay. Take your money. Somebody says, I take my money, take my gold, I take my silver, I take my wife, I take my husband, I take my children, I take my flocks, I take Kampala, I take Uganda, I take Africa, I take Asia, I take Europe, South Central North America, I take Australia, I take the distant islands, I take, I take, I take all the Father has given me, I take by the blood of the Lamb of Somebody say, I take I take somebody say I take by the blood shout I take by the blood hallelujah when the devil wakes up in the night and says go no mbuza niya kukubye niya kugambye ko Romga ba sitani zero si sabiye na kwa kumegana na awe madamu kusinza yesu na kwa kutula na kwa kumenya na kadira kuru sozi amaso gamu kila kuru sozi embala ba zajira kuru sozi nensiri zanu mira kuru sozi akabi na kabiri na kuru sozi usi bebi tagua. And then you tell the devil. Why are you telling me to go? Who spoke to you? Who spoke to you? And the devil says there is a voice. I said there is a voice. I had a voice telling me. Why didn't you listen to my voice? Because you are a Christian. You want to be proud of your voice. Why did you not listen to my voice? He says your voice is very light. Unless it is helped by the blood of the Jesus Christ, your, love, your, your, your husband. So your husband told me to let you go. Not because you said so, he said so. They came banging on the houses. Moses, get out. Where are you? Get out. 
Pharaoh is calling you. He said, what is it? Take your people. Go worship your God. Take their wives, take your wives, take your husband, take your flocks. And God had told them, while you go, ask for gold and silver. They said, give us the gold, take it also. These are things Pharaoh had refused to do and to give when the man of God was still shouting. It means his voice was not the ultimate voice. It means our voice is not the ultimate voice. The ultimate voice is the voice of the blood of Jesus. When we have prayed and we are done, don't boast in your prayer. Remember the voice of the blood. For you have come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than your prayer. He said go. And it's in the middle of the night. So Moses sent to all the people. He called them, get out. He blew the trumpet. And now the people were told, now, as you go out, ask your boss, ask your neighbor, ask everything for gold. What is making the voice of the slaves to be heard by the Egyptians when they are asking for money? Give me money. What voice was backing them? The voice of the blood. The firstborn of Egypt is dead. The lamb is dead in the place of the Israelite. This is your Passover lamb, Jesus Christ. His blood has been shed. Paul told the Corinthians, even Christ, our Passover lamb, has been slain for us. That means you have to go to the events of Egypt and replicate them in your present day. Because Christ is called the Passover lamb. That means what God did in Egypt, he still does today. The same way that after you've screamed at devils and shouted at devils, there's a time where you say enough and you get your holy communion and you kneel somewhere this is what I do all that time for you I did it even this morning for you you kneel somewhere and say blood of Jesus I thank you you speak better than me you speak louder than me you speak more efficiently than me. You speak more powerfully than me. You are more persuasive than my intercession. You are the one speaking now. I celebrate your speech. I celebrate. Can anybody just enter into that moment? I celebrate your speech, blood of Jesus. I celebrate your speech over my children. What is that area that was troubling you? Celebrate the speech of the blood of Jesus over that area. All across this auditorium. Think of that place that was bothering you. Think of that thing that was bothering you. Think whether it's in your body, in your soul, in your family, in your marriage, in your children, in your job, in your finances, in your business. You watching me online. What is that thing that has been bothering you? Tell the blood I am glad that you are speaking speaking better in this area Father thank you, you are speaking over my children, you are speaking over my congregation, you are speaking over my people, you are speaking over my wife you are speaking over my husband you are speaking over my boys and girls oh blood of Jesus thank you now talk to the blood as someone who hears you because the blood represents the life of Jesus that is Jesus Christ himself for the Bible says the blood of every living thing is its life, that means you can have a conversation with the blood right now I know you've never had a conversation with the blood but now I give you five minutes have conversations with the blood lift it up have conversations with the blood tell the blood I thank you I thank you you're speaking over my marriage I thank you you're speaking over my finances you're speaking with your voice louder than anything I can think of you're speaking blood of Jesus you are speaking greater 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 than my intercession blood of Jesus I thank you you're speaking over my ministry over my vision over my dreams you online talk to the blood have conversations with the blood blood I thank you you are telling evil to pass over oh celebrate the speech of the blood you are telling cancer to pass over disease to pass over poverty to pass over for the father said when the angel shall see the blood he will pass over you celebrate the blood that is telling evil to pass over accidents to pass over early death to pass over failure to pass over shame to pass over oh we 
thank you blood of Jesus you are speaking that evil pass over this ministry calamity pass over our restoration center calamity pass over my children calamity pass over my wife calamity pass over my George Benjamin Dalin and Zoe calamity pass over my leaders pass over my spiritual children pass over in the name of Jesus calamity the blood of Jesus is saying pass over the agape family oh thank you blood of Jesus thank you blood of Jesus thank you blood of Jesus you're speaking of our money thank you blood of Jesus you are releasing our money from the hands of Pharaoh thank you blood of Jesus you're releasing our finances from the hands of the heathen thank you blood of Jesus you're releasing our children from drugs from addiction thank you blood of Jesus you're releasing our family from sin you're bringing them into salvation thank you blood of Jesus you're speaking over Ruby Rizzi thank you blood of Jesus you're speaking over Western Uganda thank you blood of Jesus there is mighty salvation and Ayagabareda over Rizzi, there's a revival in Western Uganda spoken by the blood of Jesus thank you blood of Jesus mighty healings signs and wonders and miracles in Western Uganda thank you blood of Jesus there's an outpouring of your spirit thank you blood of Jesus there's an outpouring of your glory thank you blood of Jesus oh thank you blood of Jesus men and women are coming to the father in multitudes in western Uganda men and women are coming to the Lord boys and girls are coming to the Lord in multitudes because of your speech thank you Jesus thank you blood of Jesus every cancer dies every blind eye opens every deaf ear opens every Every lamb lake is straightened. Broken bones are healed. Thank you, blood of Jesus. You're speaking glory. Celebrate the speech of the blood. 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 I said celebrate the speech of the blood. Celebrate the intercession of the blood. Celebrate the fighting power of the blood. Every child of God, celebrate, celebrate the speech of the blood. Welcome you, Wagutandi Kira. Welcome you, Wagutandi Kira. Where Moses stopped, the blood took over. Where Moses stopped, the blood took over. Shatakala Gabaradega. Shetekele Gabaradagaya. Lift up your hands across this auditorium. Father, thank you. For I hear the voice of your blood over their lives, over the lives of these children, your children. I hear the voice of your blood over their families over their spouses over their children oh I hear the voice of the blood over your family you woman over your family dear man over your children dear man over your wife over your husband you dear woman I hear the voice of the blood over your finances over your business over your career I hear the voice of the blood over your ministry over your investment I hear the voice of the blood over you over your future when you sleep tonight the blood will be speaking I said when you sleep tonight the blood will be speaking when you're taking a shower the blood will be speaking when you're eating your food the blood will be speaking when you're resting on your bed the blood will be speaking give the Lord praise for the blood that speaks over your life Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are going to see the answers. They are going to look for you. I said they are going to look for you. As Pharaoh looked for Moses in the night, they are going to look for you. In fact, they are looking for you now. I said they are looking for you now. Business opportunities are looking for you now. Promotion opportunities are looking for you now. Your husband is looking for you now. Your wife is looking for you now. Your fellow 
partners are looking for you now every good thing is looking for you now it's coming after the voice of the blood the angels are activated for you because of the blood of Jesus Christ oh give the Lord praise hallelujah that's why I keep telling you have holy communion whenever you can by this you celebrate the blood and the voice of the blood any area that bothers you have holy communion over it and invoke that voice that activates the angels and the holy ghost the same blood activates the work of the holy spirit your life is made uncovered under the blood the blood is your atonement the blood of jesus is your ransom the blood of jesus is your redemption the blood of jesus is your redemption is your deliverance the blood of jesus is your propitiation the blood of jesus is your voice before the father let me tell you something let me tell you something that's going to amaze you if and many of you don't know this but hebrews says it i believe in chapter 9 or 10 one of those chapters that even after he died jesus himself even after he died he went to the father david not without blood he took his own blood to the father here is a mystery that's gonna blow you away god came to a place where he said son even as you talk to me i don't want to just hear your words bring me the words from your blood bring me your blood remember jesus came from heaven why didn't papa say stay here and speak to me he's the word of god right he could have spoken to the father to say let the children come home the father said no i hear your words but i want the voice of your blood because on earth the firstborn of humanity shed the blood of his brother now you are the firstborn of all that will be born again go shed your blood for them i want to hear the voice of your blood not the voice of your lips i don't want to hear the voice of your lips i want to hear the voice of your blood even the son of god went back home with his own blood offered it to the father when he rose from the dead then he came back to spend the 40 days he spent on earth with the disciples that was after he had taken his blood and the father said now i hear your voice now they can be saved now they can be healed the bible says there is the ark of the covenant in heaven and he went and sprinkled his blood on the mercy seat the father is listening to the voice of the blood of jesus not just his words his words were from the beginning do you understand what i'm saying his words are from the beginning he's the word of god in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he was with god in the beginning then the word had to become flesh so that flesh can yield up what blood for a voice that will redeem men so we have to have conversations with the blood of jesus Meditate upon these things and stop arguing with the devil. He's not your equal. Celebrate the blood. Celebrate the blood. Tukaya nyene sitani echimala. Tukaya nyene ye echimala. Let the blood do the talking. Let us worship the King of Kings the lord of lords love on him shower him with our praise and worship and our service let the blood now when he tells you rebuke that devil you rebuke it and you won't rebuke it 10 times it will listen to you the first time go because you're backed by the voice of the blood hallelujah to the lamb of god if you're here and you've never given your life to jesus christ Thank you for putting that verse for the children on the board. If Jesus counted it worthy and necessary to do that, 
that neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption. Ne papa yagamba, my son, I've heard your voice many times, but I want to hear the voice of your blood. And on the cross, look here, children of God. That man was spread out like this. And the same ground that took Abel's blood began to receive Jesus' blood. And the, the, the ground began to say, this is a different kind of blood. This is a different voice. And the Bible says, Pastor Rona, here we are wanting to raise the dead. If we don't get this revelation... I expect to see the dead raised in the Rerezi Crusade. In the Rerezi Crusade. I feel it in my spirit that God wants to raise the dead in the Rerezi Crusade. I feel it in my spirit that the children of this ministry are going to raise the dead many times. They're going to raise the dead. This ministry is going to raise the dead more than any ministry you've ever had. But listen to me. As the blood of Jesus entered the ground, the earth which had taken Abel's blood and that had swallowed so many dead people, the moment the blood of Jesus entered, the dead saints came back to life. Who told them to come back? Which prophet was speaking at that time? Who was preaching at that time? Abbe, there was no good man, no good preacher at the time. The only preacher who was good was Jesus and he was the dead one. All of the other preachers were the bad ones who killed him, the Pharisees. There was no prophet telling the dead to come back. And Jesus, his mouth is silenced because he's dead. But his blood was speaking. The dead said, we hear the blood. They came up, walked into the city at his resurrection. The Bible says they were seen by so many people in the city. Projector should have put that on the platform. Who told those dead to come out? Chirindi! Even in Jesus' own ministry, Pastor Rona Yazuki Zango Mukom. Jesus raised one by one. Lazarus, Jairus' daughter, the widow's son at Nahin. One by one. But his blood raised them in mass. Give us verse 50. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. He's died. The blood has gone into the ground. And the graves were opened. Many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Not at his voice of the lips. Not one at a go. But many. Somebody say many. many. That means the blood raises many more than his actual voice of the lips. That's a powerful revelation and mystery. They arose. Next verse. And they came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. You imagine the pandemonium. What is about to happen to your life by the blood of Jesus is going to appear to many. That's why there's nothing about us. There's nothing about you. There's nothing about this ministry that can remain dead. This ministry celebrates the blood every Monday. I've never known a ministry that has done it this way. Maybe they're there, but I've never known. Every Monday for the past two and a half years now, we are having Holy Communion. Every Monday for our nation and for the nations of the earth and for souls. And God honors that. Not us. He honors the blood. Every Monday we come in with blood. You're going to see that dead coming out of graves. They appeared to many. Everything that looked like dead in you, it's about to appear to many. I said it's about to appear to many. You see, when a thing is dead, it is hidden away from the many. 
but when it is raised it appears to many do you understand me so whatever of yours was hiding from many it's about to appear to many by the blood of Jesus Christ imagine the joy in the city the pandemonium in the city a woman buried her husband six months ago one year ago two years ago and dude comes home said mama wabana hello but said batata john i remind he says no it's okay keep your husband i'm on my way to heaven me i'm out of here i just wanted to say hello i love you i wish you well with your new husband they appear to many they appear to many everything about you is about to appear to many in rubirizi we are appearing to many in Kampala, we are appearing to many. In Uganda, we are appearing to many. In Africa, we are appearing to many. Somebody say amen. In Asia, in the Arab world, we appear to many. In Europe, we appear to many. South Central North America, we appear to many. Australia, we appear to many. Distant Thailand, we appear to many. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, your money will appear to many. These are our conversations with the blood. This message needed Holy Communion, but the Lord gave it to me this morning. It's not what I was going to preach. We shall have Holy Communion tomorrow. Over Rubirizi and our nation, we shall continue from this very vein, this heart. Njagalo kuvu rubiri zingawadi yokuwa zuki de. Ngasiba kutena ko. Bunyaruguru will know there is a God in heaven, and that the Son of God died on the cross. That's my prayer. Let some dead man, woman, in fact, I'm asking for more than one. Basigari yonga babu lide injiri. Bunyaruguru will never forget. Hallelujah. Celebrate the blood every time you come in prayer. If you've never given your life to Jesus, Shalom High School, if you've never given your life to Jesus, wherever you are, and all of you online, if you've never given your life to Jesus, those of you that are on YouTube, just put a waving emoji if you want to give your life to the Lord. But those of you that are here, if you want to give your life to the Lord, just get up and come to me now. Walk away from that failure, that shame, that madness. Let the blood of Jesus speak over you. If you want to give your life to Jesus today, get up from the seat and come. If you're at Shalom High School and your visitors from that other school, I'm going to lead you in prayer. You can respond because now these days we have people giving their lives to the Lord online. Online. So many of them. So who here has never given their life to the Lord? Come here. You all better be born again. Or else you'll miss the voice of the blood over your life. Let me go to those online. In case there are students at Shalom that want to give their lives to the Lord. And if you're on YouTube in your house and you want to give your life to the Lord, repeat these words after me. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. I give you my life. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me with your word. I give you my life. I am yours. You are mine. Forever. Fill me with your spirit. I will never walk away from you. I am born again. Amen. Now, <clears throat> thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You see, the Lord has been telling me very strongly in the recent month how greatly. He's going to use the children of this ministry. How greatly. 
He's going to use the children of this. How greatly. Especially the young and despised. How greatly. He has spoken that to me so vehemently. So forcefully. He says there's going to be such a young and powerful army. But now I'm hearing him say, tell them, many of them are actually going to raise the dead. They are going to raise the dead. At your word and with your hands. And there's someone here, you have actually, it's one of your desire, you have desired it, but you even feared to prefer it. But you will raise the dead. Not one, not two, in this life, in this unfolding generation, many of you young people are going to raise the dead. I release it over you now. I release it over you now. I plant it in your spirit, in your belly. You will see it happen in this life. By your word and at your hands, you will raise the dead. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this generation. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this generation. You will see the healings. You'll see the blind eyes open and everything happening. But this generation will raise the dead more than... And here's the uniqueness of what God is doing with you. Many that have raised the dead have been what people call the men of God. The great men of God. Bonk is so some dead come back to life. Quite a number. But God is telling me the uniqueness of this ministry is that it's going to be done by children who are not pastors. They are not past, no title at all. And this God is going to do to demonstrate the greatness of the love message. That greatness of his love. Greatness of his love. You will raise the dead. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I pray my Zoe will raise the dead. My Darlene will raise the dead. My Benji will raise the dead. My Josh will raise the dead. And I pray your children will raise the dead. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Can we give to the Lord? Let's get our tithes and offerings. Those of you that are online now, all of you that have pledges for the crusade, please send in the money now. Pledges for the crusade, send in the money now. We have three weeks and what? Three days? Were they three days? Three weeks and three days. All the money we can get, send it in. We need it now. We need it now. If you never made a pledge, this is your opportunity. The Lord began the work already. Way before this crusade starts on 21st. The Lord began a great work with our special forces. And the wave is building. Six thousand one hundred plus souls so far. So those of you that are online, give to the crusade. Now online, you're wondering which information should you give, crusade or giving? No, put the, cruc for the giving for the service, for the service. So send your tithes and offerings right now. Those of you that are here on the, in the auditorium, get your money. Give like one who knows that the blood is speaking over your money. Don't take a revelation and not apply it. Amen? Give like one who knows the blood is speaking over your money. Okay, get your wallet, get your mobile money. I want to speak by the blood of Christ. May men begin to call you, women begin to call you, people begin to call you, money begin to call you, money begin to run to you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ every good thing call you may money answer to you by the blood of the Lamb of God and by the power of His Spirit in Jesus' name. Go on and give. Lord, you have opened my eyes. You have opened my eyes. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You have opened my eyes. You have opened my eyes. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You guide me in all things. You guide me in all things. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you guide me, you guide me, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you guide me, Lord, you guide me. Teach me all things. Teach me things. Lord, you teach me. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit.
bless your week in the name of Jesus Christ I cover your week with the blood of the Lamb of God your every step is covered with the blood of the Lamb of God your home, your family, your children, your spouse is covered with the blood of the Lamb of God your finances, everything pertaining to you covered with the blood of the Lamb of God I bless your Monday, I bless your Tuesday I bless your Wednesday, I bless your Thursday I bless your Friday, I bless your Saturday in the name of Jesus Christ the world respond to you in the name of Jesus Christ people respond to you in the name of Jesus Christ favor respond to you in the name of Jesus Christ money respond to you in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit realm respond to you in the name of Jesus Christ your family respond to you in the name of Jesus Christ Kampala respond to you in the name of Jesus Christ Uganda respond to you in the name of Jesus Christ the nations respond to you in Jesus name triple to T we have an appointment today tomorrow night evening our revival prayer meeting continues Wednesday second quarter blessing Amen. bring everybody that you wish well let the blessing of God sit on them hallelujah stand up I want to let you go what are we doing for closing glorious life okay all right I'm gonna dance with you <laughs> It's this wonderful grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Spirit of God that is with you now and forever. Amen. You're free to go. You're free to stay. Any first-time visitors? Just a minute. First-time visitor. First-time visitor today. Oh, there's somebody there. Another one there. Another one here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, you're, are you sisters? Is she your sister? Is she your sister? Huh? A friend. Who looks like you? Impossible. Go and ask your father. No, you people need to see. Ah, uh -uh, you ladies, come here. Chino chiri serious. Come here. We need to have conversations with your father. She is saying this is her friend. Look at them. She's your friend. Yes. Are her parents close to your home? Did they grow up near your home? Huh? Different tribes. How can that be? Because I thought that her parents lived close to yours. I was going to leave the conversation there. But they look alike, right? Amazing. God bless you. Good to see you. Have you welcomed my first time visitors? So the rest of you, you're free to go. We love you. See you on Wednesday. Let's do that song. I am
Mujimbe. Ah! 